Today's video is designed for miniature painting beginners or people who want to try miniature painting for the very first time. However, this video could also serve as a nice refresher course for people who are fairly good with miniature painting already. Today, we're painting another Grimskald miniature. I primed this miniature with spray cans. I primed it with gray primer and then white primer mostly from the top. Watch this video as we turn this Grimskald miniature into this. This miniature was painted mostly with the Army Painter War Paints Fanatic paints. I'll put a ton of links at the description below. I'm Don, welcome to my channel. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. Also, this channel won't be possible without the support of my patrons. Now, wet palette. You don't really need a wet palette, but it helps a lot because it keeps the paints moist as you paint the miniature and the paints will remain workable longer. Now, you could DIY your wet palette, you could get materials from the grocery stores, or you could get a proper wet palette. I use primarily Army Painter wet palettes and Redgrass wet palettes. So like I said, you don't really need a wet palette. However, you may want a wet palette. Wet palette simply makes miniature painting easier. Now paints. Paints, there are a ton of paint brands. And mostly, like mostly, most of them are good. But basically, you choose paints depending on their accessibility to you. And at the end of the day, paints are like personal preference. Like you like this paint because it, it kind of blends really well. It, it lays down really well on the miniature. So it's basically it boils down after a while to your personal preference. The past couple of years, I use mostly cuttlefish colors. However, these days, I primarily use Army Painter paints. Basically, I'm still learning their vast range of colors. Brushes. Basically, there are two kinds of brushes. Synthetic brushes and natural hair or sable brushes. You don't really need to spend a fortune to get good brushes. Especially if you buy Army Painter paints because some sets has brushes with them already. If you're new to miniature painting, you could actually do painting with just cheap synthetic brushes. However, if you plan to buy better and higher quality Kolinsky brushes like my red grass here, it's worth like it's worth the try. Cleaning the brushes is key to make them last longer. I use mostly Army Painter brushes and red grass brushes, but again, it boils down to your personal preference. Water cups. Basically, you need a couple of water cups, one to clean your brush in between color changes, and one to get clean water from. And of course, you need a piece of towel or paper towel to wick your brushes whenever you get water. Your water cups can be anything. As you can see here, I just have a coffee mug with my logo and I use this to clean my brushes, especially during and after painting. Now for the clean water cup, you don't need to have another coffee mug because you don't need a lot of clean water. Also, if you're painting with a lot of washes or speed paints, you could use mixing dish like this one so that you house one in one of the dish, you just put clean water. Lastly, always wick your brush on a piece of towel so that the brush is not loaded with water. Now let's paint. We'll paint with War Paints Fanatic that has color primer matches. This video is actually inspired by Goobertown's most recent video because he used just the color primer matches those paints in painting miniatures. Basically, this paints means that these colors 
matches the primer colors that the army painter produces. When painting like this, when you're just painting the base colors, key is like the thinning or not thinning of the paints. Basically, my brushes are wet. I dip them in a clean water and then I wick it on a piece of towel. And then I like mix it with the paints as you could see in the video. So you don't really need a lot of thinning if you're painting base colors. You just need to like apply a really really small amount of water to make the paint flow better on the surface of the miniature. The War Paints Fanatic Paints has very, very good coverage. However, I highly recommend that you thin them down a little bit and apply a couple of thin coats than one heavy coat. So although War Paints Fanatic has good coverage even with just one coat, I recommend a couple of thin coats for a better finish. The great thing about War Paints Fanatic is that even if you over thin these paints, they still have very good coverage. So to be honest, it's so difficult to over thin these paints because they still have very nice opacity. So if you're really going for a very smooth finish or you're blending all these colors, you're kinda sort of doing fat glazes, but we won't do that here you can over thin the paints but basically in this video i'm just showing you that you just need to apply the paints as cleanly as you can by cleanly i mean you have to keep it clean like the definition in between the different elements different parts of the miniature so basically make sure that the orange paint is not going over the red paints or the white paints is not like littered with splashes of other colors. Now you see me here painting like a few areas black, mainly the weapons and the base. This black underpainting will serve me well once I paint the actual colors. Although I must admit that I won't show the painting of the non-metallic metal, the axe, because it's not a basic technique. However, I have to push the painting to a very good standard because this is painting for Grimmskull. It is important to note that yellows, oranges, and sometimes even reds has weaker coverage, even for War Paints Fanatic. Although with War Paints Fanatic, a couple of thin coats will give you a full coverage even if it's yellow or orange. Similar to the other colors, although you're painting in multiple layers, key here is to make sure that you don't overpaint the orange over the skin or the other parts of the miniature. You could actually get away with not thinning yellows and oranges similar to your thinning with the other colors because they are a little bit more hmm, fluid they're not as thick as the usual colors also notice that i'm just using a number one brush for the painting of all the base colors now since we painted the black or i mean the base with black paint already it's a matter of just painting all the separate pebbles or parts of the base with gray paint in this manner we won't be forced to apply too many washes later to define the different cobbles or cobblestones in the base of this miniature by painting just the raised areas of the details of the groundwork, we have a very nice definition in between the different cobblestones. Now you see in the video I'm doing non-metallic metal, I will have a separate video of this because this is not, again, not a basic painting process or method. However, I must say, once you get the hang of painting non-metallic metal, it's just basic layering. And it's very fulfilling. Although, I wouldn't recommend doing non-metallic metal if you're doing army painting. So that's it for the base colors. Except for the orange, all of these paints has primer color matches. 
Like I said earlier, the wet palette will keep the paints moist and will keep the paints workable longer. Now, as you can see in the video, key to painting the base colors is keeping it clean. Really well-defined definition in between the different elements of the miniature is key. This actually looks good already, but we'll proceed to doing or applying washes. Washes. This is the most fun part of basic painting. We'll use War Paints Fanatic washes, but you could also use Speed Paints. Dry brushing and applying washes are the most relaxing methods of painting. Being the most relaxing way of painting, this makes Slop Chop very, very popular. Basically, washes kind of like settle on the recesses and details of the model. So basically, after applying washes, your miniature has very has better definition and has better contrast. If you're going for subtle or very subtle transitions, you could actually thin down the washes further. You may use water or mediums, which I always prefer, when thinning down washes. But in this video, I kept it really basic. So I just used water in thinning down the washes. And I did not thin it too much. I basically like the intensity of Warpaint's Fanatic washes already. So not much thinning was done to the washes. You may apply washes in multiple layers. Like apply a really lazy quick wash all over the model with some brown color. And then do pin washes like small washes in certain areas or crevices with darker or different colored washes. You just need to make sure that each wash, each layer of wash dries first before you apply another round of washes. Also, as you are applying the wash, you may wick some areas with too much washes so that there's no too much buildup in certain areas. Also, you could blend the edges so that you have very nice blending and you won't produce coffee stains. Coffee stains are basically edges of a wash or a thin down paint that dries faster than the other parts of the wash. So it creates a very nasty stain. The key here is to make sure that you blend this out or blend this down before the washes dry. You may also use the monster brush from Army Painter or any big brush when applying washes. This will make sure that you reduce like the possibility of creating coffee stains because you're applying the wash in bigger areas or you're applying more wash all over the miniature. So coffee stains is a lesser possibility if you're using a bigger brush. You may also use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time of the washes. But I do recommend that you allow the washes to settle down for like a couple of minutes and then you can do hair drying or you could use the hair dryer. Do not use the hair dryer immediately. Let the washes like do its thing like settle down on recesses and details before you use the hair dryer. Or you could apply thinner layers of washes so that they dry faster and so that you could layer faster. I have yet to try the Army Painter like quick shade like or dipping wash, dipping shade, but I think that also does the job really well. After the base colors and then the washes, we are finished, at least for this standard. Now we are done. So as you saw in the video, it's a matter of just painting the base colors really cleanly, as clean as you can. And then you could do quick washes to add a bit more depth to your painting. So that's basically tabletop standard. So that's it with the washes. The washes gave more definition and more contrast to our painting. Now we have a fairly nice miniature with just the painting of the base colors and some quick washes. So miniature painting is easy, even if you haven't tried to paint a miniature yet. It's like 
coloring books, you just need to paint the areas with specific colors. Try to keep it as clean as you can so that you have good definition. Now, I do think anyone can paint. It's like, like again, it's just like coloring books, although you're painting on a 3D object. And especially if you play with tabletop games or wargaming, this will make your gameplay more immersive. Like playing with painted models, it's, it's just simply much more fun. Again, a quick shout out to Grimskald for this awesome Santa Dwarf miniature. Now, this part or the next part of the videos are not really for beginners or first-time painters. I'll be using cuttlefish colors. They are pre-glazed paints. I consider them like specialty paints similar to speed paints. Although I consider cuttlefish colors and speed paints as specialty paints, of course, you can paint miniatures, especially basic miniatures, with just these paints but they do work really well with regular acrylic paints like War Paints Fanatic. Now, multiple layers of washes can be time-consuming because you need to let each pass or each layer dry before you apply another layer or another round of washes. Speed paints will work as a glaze paint and will work or build up shades faster than washes, but that deserves a different video. Now you can see in the video, I'm using cuttlefish colors, which are pre-glaze paints. These paints are more translucent than regular acrylic colors. So layering with cuttlefish colors will result to better blending because you're layering translucent paints. So you see here, I'm adding more shades to some areas of the model to give my painting more volume. I call this method fat glazes or basically I thin down the cuttlefish colors a little bit more than usual and then apply it on the shade areas. Sometimes I don't even blend the edges of these paints because they're, they're translucent already and I sort of create very nice blending with less effort. You could also do this with War Paints Fanatic. But I prefer using War Paints Fanatic Stabilizer than just water. But again, that deserves a different video. I must admit though that because of the coverage of War Paints Fanatic, it takes a lot of water and stabilizer to thin it down to glaze consistency. So basically, don't tell Army Painter about this, but I need more bottles of stabilizer, War Paint Stabilizer, so that I could go back to my sketch and glaze technique using just War Paints Fanatic. Now, as you could see, as we slowly add more shade colors, darker colors via with the cuttlefish colors, we are also introducing more colors, meaning we're adding color depth to our painting. So when you're adding shade, I recommend not to use blacks and very dark browns. Instead, use blues or dark purples or violets when you're adding shade. So that other than adding shades, you also add more color depth to your painting. I only applied a couple of layers of cuttlefish color glazes here. But you could apply more if you want to have a darker finish. But... I'm pretty happy with the result so far and I'm ready to move on to layering towards the highlights. The darker shades we added here will also make our highlighting later in the video more prominent. Oh, by the way, you may also apply glazes or fat glazes and shades via stippling. You don't always need to blend it by applying it via stippling or by painting glazes with texturing in mind, you will create very nice subtle texture to your miniature painting. Now this Grimskull miniature is looking better than just the base colors and washes. Now we are layering towards the highlights. When it comes to layering skin, I thin down my paints a little bit more as you can see in the video. 
so that I paint with translucent paints. By painting with more translucent paints or less opaque paints, I create better blending. Painting with thin down skin colors is more efficient than doing glazes later. Painting with translucent paints is a little bit more time consuming than painting with opaque paints, but you get better blending with less effort. Similar to washes, key to good glazing is to let the previous layers dry before another layer of glazes. It's also very important to know that you should wick your brushes even after getting paint, the thin down paint, because you don't want pulling and you have better control if you have less paint on the brush. Now the layering of the rest of the miniature is just basic layering, like you don't really have to thin down the paints too much, but in this case I was thinking of texturing as I paint the rest of the miniature. So similar to base color painting earlier in the video, detail painting and texturing and highlighting, you shouldn't really thin the paints too much if you're not painting skin and if you don't want very very good blending or you simply want to speed up the painting process because you don't need smooth leather, you don't really need smooth, um, super smooth non-metallic metal and stuff like that. So you could speed up the painting of the details by just doing basic layering. No glazes and no painting with translucent paints. Now key to good layering is to make sure that you know your source of light. But that again, deserves a separate video. Now before our final thoughts, a ton of thanks to all you guys, my viewers, and my patrons at Patreon. And of course, special thanks to Army Painter for making this video possible. Now we are finished. So in this video, you saw the painting of the base colors and then washes, a little bit of cuttlefish colors, which are fat glazes, and then of course the layering of the skin and the layering of the rest of the miniature. So I hope as a beginner painter or like you want to try miniature painting for the very first time, you find this video helpful. Miniature painting is a very fun hobby. You just need the proper tools, good quality paints, and a little bit of time learning all the methods or painting techniques so that you will enjoy the hobby a bit more. I hope you learned basic things that you need to know when it comes to miniature painting in this video. But moving forward, we'll produce more intermediate and advanced videos for painters that are comfortable at miniature painting already. That's it, Pansit. I hope you like this video. Do like, subscribe, and all that stuff. And until my next video, guys. Bye!